Hi and welcome everyone. I always love it when somebody asks me to do a recap, to do an, um, a presentation on something I've already presented. It makes me want to do it even better. They asked me if I could get in a little closer on the asteroids, even though I was close, and to slow things down even more. Well, with pleasure I did, and of course I enhanced it, I readjusted some uh, exposure in some of the frames, uh, some different editing here, and uh, now this isn't a photo guys, okay? It's live. I know it's hard to follow the channel sometimes, but in general, I'm always filming all my things. It's that when I present photography, I will hover over the uh, the photo to present it like uh, we're actually there. And sometimes people are getting mixed up with uh, it being live footage or not. But I'm not hiding anything. Just ask. Um, the moon is my live footage. If you're seeing uh, a photo of the surface of a star, it's not live. So enjoy. These are the asteroids and objects just a very small amount of some of the asteroids and objects that we saw. Um, this is all slowed down, everyone, by the way. Uh, these objects are traveling at hundred uh, over 100,000 miles an hour, or is it kilometers, I think. You know, they can attain high speeds. And whether they're meteors or asteroids or... What happens is comets go by in the sky. And Halley's Comet, for one, is one of the comets that leaves the most debris everywhere in the universe and well throughout the path that it takes we are right now earth is in the debris stream of the comets at one point these meteoroids become heavy they fall down as um, the pieces also inside of the nebulae in many of the constellations do the same thing they'll fall down they'll create drag they will get heavy and they will burn up in the front, the nose will burn up, they'll die, they'll leave a trail, they'll either burn out, or this is what happens, you know, these objects are uh, are there and they get uh, in, in the mainstream, and when Earth goes by this main debris stream, we must most definitely be able to capture them because they're so close by. There's some that we're seeing in the lower atmosphere now, which is a bit concerning when you think of it, but I tend to believe that they've been there forever you know um, or that many asteroids come in the lower atmosphere but maybe not just that big this is the Sun on the Sun uh, during the uh, massive CME coronal mass ejection that was instated by many scientists that we saw in the media too but very vaguely that there was a massive coronal mass ejection what is a coronal mass ejection it's just basically the plasma uh, spewing off. I mean, this can shoot up, guys, at a million miles an hour. It's it's not something that you know. It's it's in quick speeds, like we can see it. Like here, the planet. This is um, this is slowed down just a little bit. And well, if it's not a planet, guys, it definitely is a planetoid because that is not small. It's bigger than Earth. Okay, and it's not something that astronomers are, are used to capturing because there isn't something I don't believe as big as uh, earth uh, or b this big that will go by in front of the Sun uh, every day you know that we have beautiful celestial events look at the light here as now it is a blaze or you know the reflection of, of the ice maybe from the Sun whatever look at the light turn like a flashlight and head towards the other way look at that as it's going over uh, and very possibly close to the sun's surface or the corona here the same planet or planetoid seen in a different uh, texturing if you want it's just almost black and white just a bit of yellowish hue uh, to bring out the details if you bring the yellow up a little bit you'll you'll see more of the uh, a brilliant light like we're seeing right here but this isn't added light and I don't have the editor that everyone thinks I have the afterburner I friggin wish I did we're talking like over a thousand dollars in Canada I'm tending to think Canada is maybe more expensive than everyone else but it's expensive here look at the light turning this is why I do this editing nothing has changed here but you can't see this with your eyes this you can't see all these uh, lights around the Sun now look at this light here okay it literally moves like it's alive you know, it could be just natural. And listen, it's in heat. Things move in heat. There are uh, winds. There are uh, directions that objects can go. 
in this mass of heat. It must be windy as heck. I imagine it would be windy on the sun. Just look at it go by. It looks like a fireball. But here, look what it's going to do. Here's another one. Okay, that's big. Um, you're going to see it come back. Oh, actually, I think you just saw it. But it was pretty amazing that it looked like it was alive, like a biological creature. This is the sun. Yes, everyone gets mad when I post it. He goes, the guy puts up a frame. Says, There's no frame. There's nothing added. It's the sun with a light technique. <laughs> That's what the uh, contour looks like. And what I show, this is an asteroid or object spiraling that has a long um, trail on it. Uh, and there's debris around it. And of course, when I found it, it was the same week. NASA said that there was one. I showed you the sun in this editing technique, uh, which shows you all the layers uh, of electricity that are, or and or radiation around the sun. Guys, it was crazy. The sun is not like this. It's just usually a regular sphere. Here, the beautiful planet. Oh yeah, it's a planet. It's something. Black dot in the center of it, scary as heck, uh, crossing paths with our sun. You can see here, I tried to bring out the light uh, technique a bit more to get more clarity and color uh, on the, uh, this pl uh, planet a natural color I don't put a, dr uh, a drop of color in any of this these are real planets or objects that are giving us back these colors if we're seeing this color it could be the atmospheric disturbance it could be the molecules of water in the air this is an asteroid south side bottom side of the moon that was seen during October. Many uh, sightings in, in the sky. Now, these are real objects, guys. Okay, so we're going to go see it a little closer. And when you look at the surface, you go, wow, what's going on? You know, this is the mysterious blue planet that appears ne uh, next to the moon every once in a while. I saw it once, the last phase. Um, this phase, unfortunately, I didn't get en enough of the, which I didn't see it, uh, by the way. No, it was not beside the moon. I do confirm that, that for me, here in Canada, I didn't see it beside the moon. And last phase, I did. And two phases before, I did not. So is it something that will reoccur, come back? Was it a one-time thing that we were lucky enough to see? But we're looking at its surface. This is, you know, we're used to looking at the surface of the moon. It's the only object close by that we could literally see structuring and surface. Well, no, it isn't, because this object was fairly close. For me to be able to get the edge and look it's, it's real you can tell you can see that it's a, a a stone that was formed in the beginning of time you could literally see it this is the surface um mountainous structures even clouds and hazes on the surface guys whether it be an asteroid or a moon it is absolutely mesmerizing uh to capture this think of it it's an object that's spiraling through the universe and, and probably has been for millions or billions of years and I got its surface. For me, oh, can we say what we used to say in the 80s, I guess it's a polar, for me it's a Polaroid moment. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. We're even closer here guys and now we're seeing a real surface and we're seeing how it was formed possibly by the heating up of this rock Whatever passage it went through, you know, oh, it's just amazing to be able to see the surface of it. It's authentic. It's real. And I'm always studying to try to see the edges of this. And I'm sorry, but some of them do look flat, plain. I have not really uh, gotten any proof. I'm not saying that, that uh, they're flat, but you know what? I don't have any proof that they're not. Uh, and I don't have any proof that they are. But... I always show the edge or an edge of these and some of them are thick some of them are really thick they could be a near spherical but uh what is this to the right is that a vein or a bridge i'm starting to wonder if some of these are not ships stars or creatures i know i'm gonna hear i'll never hear the end of this biological creatures my friends the world is probably not ready to talk about it. And Steve Olson and WSO YouTube channel is very open to talk about this and is, I believe, what got me started last night looking at these objects. I went back last night to look at this object and um, I'm not saying they are biological creatures, like I said, but, um, you know, we shouldn't rule that out. These are the website contributors, the names that will remain there. Anyone who contributes to this channel will become a part of this force. 
as all the commenters are. Um, I can't thank you all enough for the support you've given me. I'm not stopping in any way what I'm doing. I haven't even gotten started yet. Um, lots of new, lots of new coming. Big telescope on the way, 14 inch telescope guys, that the community has raised for this channel. WSO YouTube channel, Steve Olson and his community, we are all interacting together like one big happy family, accepting all of our differences. But there's not many differences. We all wanna know the truth basically and check out what steve's finding up in the skies and who he's interacting with all the channels he's, he's uh exposing it's just magnificent okay i'm gonna say it does anyone see the bridge or the thing on the right that goes into the hole there what is that <laughs>